this week's Technique Tuesday video, we'll expand on our knitting chart knowledge by examining cable charts. If you're new to reading knitting charts and haven't yet seen the first two videos in this series, I recommend you start with those. As always, if you'd like to jump right to a specific point in the video, there are direct links down in the description. So before we try to decipher what these two cable symbols are telling us, let's look at all of the other information that we can tell from the chart based on what we've learned previously. First of all, we can see that we have columns of two purl stitches going up the chart. And then we can see that this is a column of six stitches wide because there's one box represents each stitch. And that's that six stitches wide. And because these are blank boxes, that represents stockinette. So we know already that we've got columns of pearls, we've got stockinette, and then we have these two cable crossings. And we don't know, how, how can we remember, we remember what these cable crossings represent and how to work them. Here's a swatch that I knit using this particular chart. So you can see I've got columns of purl stitches at the very beginning of the row and in the center of the row. And then right here, I have column of six stitches and it's producing a right crossing cable. And over here, I've got six stitches that are crossing to the left to produce a left crossing rope cable. So we know that this is right crossing and we know that this is left crossing by looking at the knitting. How can we tell that by looking at the symbol? Well, you're going to look at these long diagonal lines right here. You look, those. that's what you look at first is the long diagonal lines. And you can see right here that this is right these are leaning to the right. You can see here that these are going to the left. So that's an indication of which direction the cable crosses. So if you were looking at the chart and you can't remember, was this supposed to be right or left? You look at the diagonal lines. So then you'll notice that there are also two short diagonal lines crossing behind and they're crossing in the opposite direction of the long diagonal lines. So these two long diagonal lines are representing the stitches that are crossing to the front and the short ones are representing the stitches that are crossing behind. We don't want to look at this, ca this cable symbol on its own. It's just this one little rectangle of six stitches. We want to look at it within the context of the rest of the chart. If we look at the, the, these diagonal lines here, we can see that at the base of those lines, we have a span of three stitches. And at the top of, of those two lines, we have another span of three stitches. What this is representing is that this stitch right here is going to end up being that stitch. This one is going to end up being the second stitch here. And this one here is going to be here. So this is showing that these three stitches are going to end up over here on the right. And this diagonal line here that's showing this, this represents the stitches crossing and back. There are also three stitches there, and those are going to end up being the three stitches furthest to the left. If we look at this cable crossing, it's the same way. These first three stitches, this is crossing left, these first three stitches here are going to end up being those last three stitches over there. So we look at the symbol within the context of the row before the crossing and the row after the crossing. So when we do a cable crossing, we always slip the first stitches onto a cable needle. And then that cable needle gets held to the front or it gets held to the back, depending on which way the cable is crossing. So we can look at this symbol and we can see that this span of stitches right here, these are the ones that are going to go on the cable needle. And because they are crossing behind, we know that we need to hold the cable needle to the back of the work. In this case, those first three stitches that we put on the cable needle are going to be the ones crossing to the front. We're going to hold that cable needle to the front as well. For this rope cable, the whole repeat was six rows long and there was one crossing every six rows. There was only one crossing per repeat. Not all cables 
contain only one crossing per repeat. In fact, sometimes they include multiple crossings in a crossing row and they have multiple crossing rows per repeat. So what you can see here is I've got 14 stitches all together. Again, I've got columns of two purl stitches at the beginning and the end. And on the, on the first right side row, I have two cables that are both crossing to the left. And again, we can tell that they're crossing to the left because we see the long diagonal lines. And we can see that each of these crossings is only four stitches wide. The number of stitches you will put on the cable needle is two because that's what we see between the base of these two long diagonal lines. And the cable needle is going to be held to the front. The first two stitches of these 10 stitches are just knit a stockinette. Then you work a four stitch cable. And then you work the same four stitch cable again on the last four stitches. Then you work a wrong side row. And then for this cable crossing row, the cables are crossing to the right instead. And we can tell that we can see that the first two stitches that get put on the cable needle are held to the back because these stitches will be in back. And then the next two stitches are going to be knit and they are going to be the ones that end up in the front of the work. So we're going to work two right crossing cables and then we're going to work two knit stitches. And that's going to produce something that looks like this. It looks like a basket weave. And you can see in here that we've got two left leaning cables and we've got two right leaning cables. And you can also see that the left leaning cables are all the way over to the edge, but the right leaning cables are all the way over to the right edge. So you can see the results of that uh, within the work, but you can also compare that to the chart here. With the cables we've looked at so far, we had an even number of stitches for each crossing with half of the stitches crossing the other half. But you don't always have an even number of stitches and you don't always have half of the stitches crossing the other stitches. So here's an example of three different four stitch cables. This is a regular rope cable. So we have two stitches crossing, two stitches to the right. Here we've got three stitches crossing over one stitch, and here we have one stitch crossing over three stitches. So they all look quite different. So let's look at their charts. So these are the cable symbols for those cables, and you can, based on what we've learned so far, you can see why these symbols represent these particular cables. Right here we have three stitches right here that are crossing behind and we have one stitch in that span between the long diagonal lines. So we have this one stitch crossing over the three others and right here we can see we've only got one stitch that's going to get placed on the cable needle and held to the back and these are the three stitches right here that are going to cross in front. And then this is our regular four stitch rope cable where we have two stitches right here and they're going to be held to the back because we have the short diagonal line here and the, these two stitches right here are going to be the ones that end up crossing over to the right. So up till now all of the cables have been stockinette based. So we've always had knit stitches crossing purl stitches. But there are other kinds of cables. This kind of cable is called a traveling cable. So you can have multiple ropes, usually two knit stitches and a rope, but sometimes there are three. And for certain types of stitch patterns, you only have one knit stitch and it's twisted. It's worked through the back. Um, but this is a really typical type of rope cable where you have two knit stitches and it's traveling. They're across a background of purl stitches. So the cable crossings are knit stitches that cross over purl stitches. So here is the chart of this cable that I showed you. You can see that we've got the, the bottom half here, there's a crossing and then we get halfway up this sort of oval, oval piece and that's where the chart uh, repeat ends. So in this case, the cable symbols look a little bit different. What you'll see is we've got two knit stitches here and two purl stitches here. 
and you can see that the cable is crossing to the left and it's the it's the knit stitches that are crossing in front and rather than having a diagonal line here and another diagonal line here as you as you have for that cable crossing right here we have a little dot so this is telling us that this is a cable where we have knit stitches crossing over purl stitches and we can also use the technique of comparing what's below the cable crossing symbol and above the cable crossing symbol. So we can see that this knit stitch here starts there, it crosses over here and ends here. And this one goes here and crosses here. And these two purl stitches are crossing behind and will end up here. And so that's what this little embellishment is on this particular cable symbol. It's telling us that it's a uh, this one is a right crossing cable where two knits are crossing two purls. And then we come to this crossing and again we've got two knits crossing over only one purl. So this is two knits crossing over one purl. You can see that this purl started out over to the left and now it's going to be over to the right. And we've got a right crossing, two knit stitches over one purl stitch. And at that point, we've got two knit stitches that have uh, on each side have come together. We've got four knit stitches all together. And at this point, we have two knits crossing two knits. And then they're going to separate again. So we have two knits crossing a single purl in each direction. And then we have two knits crossing over two purls apart from each other again. So again, these symbols are packed with information. What I have here is a, is a bunch of different cable symbols along with their abbreviations. And you can see that these have the pearl embellishments. These are cables where knits are crossing pearls. But not all charts use this particular type of representation for a cable where knits are crossing pearls. Some of them use symbols that look more like this. And it makes those particular symbols really stand out in the chart. Uh, so that, that it makes it much more obvious and you're less likely to mistake, uh, say, a left crossing cable that's all stockinette for one that ha is knits crossing pearls. But you should also be looking at the stitches that are on your needle to help you determine how a cable should be crossing. Getting the most out of knitting charts requires understanding why a particular symbol was chosen to represent a particular action. Cable chart symbols are more complex than other chart symbols and are packed with information. Understanding where to look for that information will free you from the chart key and will make knitting complex cable patterns easier. If you have any comments or questions about today's video or suggestions for videos you'd like to see in the future, you can leave those down in the comments below or join the discussion in my Ravelry group, Rocks Rocks. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.